probably you have the best situation of anyone in the last 25,000 years that you're related to. So I view this as, a, you know, at some level, it's a bigger risk than humanity has ever run before. And the downside is more fundamental, more long lasting, more dangerous, more painful. But in the context, therefore, of, you know, working on it, it's a bigger opportunity. And I believe that human beings are smart and that when the chips are down, we'll do the right thing and we will triumph. Of course, you're talking in any kind of intermediate term about planetary destruction, but in the short term, you're talking about people being sick and dying and that that isn't included in any economic model as a cost. That's just a freebie because the only thing that they're measuring is the profit at the bottom of somebody's income statement and that they measure and take really seriously. But the fact that the number of people who are gonna get sick or die as a result of the pollution leading to that profit is not even included, it's not measured, it's not accounted for, and it's not valued. Crazy, really crazy. Now we're not talking about your grandkids or great grandkids, we're talking about you. I think those are incredibly important in terms of bringing you know, to today the need to act today. And I think that before there was this sense of like, yeah, it's a disaster and, you know, they're going to have to deal with it in 2100. And it's kind of like, no, you know, you've really missed the this, this scope and urgency of the problem. To me, a big part of this is to accept both the analysis of what's going on and the responsibility to solve it for this generation and for generations to come. But it's not going to be easy and there's, it's by no means clear that we will in fact win. But I just believe that human beings, ultimately, the good will triumph. And that I view this as a very stark contest.